Good morning. Good, morning. Good morning, and welcome to worship this morning here at Trinity Lutheran Church in downtown Bismarck on this fifth Sunday after Pentecost. We welcome you to our worship service today, whether you are with us in person or participating in our worship via our live stream services. This morning, we extend our congregation sympathy to the family of Sarah Marcus, wife of Kevin Marcus. Please remember their family in your prayers. Our altar flowers this morning are in memory of Dennis Butts, given by Una May and family. And this morning's radio broadcast and live stream is in memory of loved ones, given by Joyce Baldwin. We thank everyone for those tributes this morning. Today, we want to thank Scott Hauser for serving as our musician this morning, to Bob Weefald and Karen Botin as our vocalists. Our reader this morning is Margaret Fiekner. Our sound and video services today are staffed by Jim and Melanie Lewis and Nick Peterson. So we thank everyone for sharing their gifts with us today. Before we begin our worship service, just a couple of notes to point out today. The Safe Opening Task Force has weighed in and we are making a change in our masking status. If you are fully vaccinated, you do not need to be masked when you attend worship service or activities. If you have not been vaccinated, you are encouraged to mask. However, as the body of Christ here at Trinity, we will give grace to those who choose to mask and support them in doing so, while at the same time showing grace and support toward those who do not mask, because together we are the body of Christ. And another change today, coffee time is back. So check that out after worship service this morning. If you are comfortable standing, please rise for our opening hymn and the correct number for the hymn this morning, if you're looking in the hymnal, is 858, 858. Praise to the Lord the Almighty.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have left failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Kyrie eleison Lord have mercy eleison Christ have mercy Christ eleison Glory to God in the high. 
join me in the prayer of the day. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, we implore you to hear the prayers of your people. Be our strong defense against all harm and danger, that we may live and grow in faith and hope. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the reading of Scripture. The Book of Lamentations is one of our most important sources of information about the fall of Jerusalem to the Babylonians in 587 BC. Though the people admit that God's judgment was just, today's reading declares a fervent trust that God will not leave them forever. It's a reading from Lamentations chapter 3, beginning with verse 22. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul, therefore I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for one to bear the yoke in youth, to sit alone in silence when the Lord has imposed it, to put one's mouth to the dust. There may yet be hope. To give one's cheek to the smiter and be filled with insults, for the Lord will not reject forever. Although he causes grief, he will have compassion according to the abundance of his steadfast love for he does not willingly afflict or grieve anyone. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm is 30. Please read responsibly. I will exalt you, O Lord, because you have lifted me up and not, have not let my enemies triumph over me. O Lord, my God, I cried out to you, and you restored me to health. You brought me up, O Lord, from the dead. You restored my life as I was going down to the grave. Sing praise to the Lord, all you faithful. Give thanks in holy remembrance. God's wrath is short. God's favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping spends the night, but joy comes in the morning. While I felt secure, I said, I shall never be disturbed. You, Lord, with your favor, made me as strong as the mountains. Then you hid your face, and I was filled with fear. I cried to you, O Lord. I pleaded with my Lord, saying, What profit is there in my blood if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you or declare your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. O Lord, be my helper. You have turned my wailing into dancing. You have put off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. Therefore, my heart sings to you without ceasing. O Lord, my God, I will give you thanks forever. Please stand for the gospel reading. Jairus, a respected leader, begs Jesus to heal his daughter. A woman with a hemorrhage was considered ritually unclean and treated as an outcast. Both Jairus and the unnamed woman come to Jesus in faith, believing in his power to heal and bring life out of death. Our gospel reading this morning comes from the fifth chapter of the Gospel of Mark, beginning with the 21st verse. I invite you to sit because it's a kind of long reading, and I'd rather have you listen well than be uncomfortable. 
When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him, and he was beside the sea. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue, named Jairus, came, and when he saw him, fell at his feet. He begged him repeatedly, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, that she may be made well and live. So Jesus went with him. And a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years. She had endured much under many physicians and spent all that she had, and she was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. For she said, if I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately her hemorrhage stopped, and she felt in her body that she had been healed of her disease. Immediately aware that power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing in on you. How can you say, Who touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him, and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When he had entered, he said to them, Why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talithakum, which means little girl, get up. And immediately the, got, the girl got up and began to walk about. She was 12 years of age. At this, they were overcome with amazement. He strictly ordered them that no one should know this, and he told them to give her something to eat. The Gospel of the Lord. An editorial comment this morning before we jump into the sermon. It was just a great joy to sing praise to the Lord Almighty this morning. Together, it, made the, it makes worship feel different to be able to sing together again. Thanks be to God, especially for your voices and your smiling faces, those of you who are vaccinated and are maskless this morning. Well, grace to you in peace from God, our Father and our Lord and risen Savior, Jesus the Christ. My internship year from seminary was spent partially as a hospital chaplain. One day, at the request of a floor nurse, I entered a hospital room. It was broad daylight. The door to the room had been shut. I knocked. I got the okay to come in. As I pushed the door open, it was mainly dark inside. The lights were off, the curtains were pulled. The only light in there was what streamed in now through the open door and the cracks around the curtains of the window. The patient was laying in the bed. I introduced myself, told him that I had been asked by the floor nurse to stop by, and just said, what's up? He told me, that he had been given a diagnosis that meant a couple of weeks to live, maybe a month or two. He was completely alone in the room, deflated. We talked about life, 
his family, faith, and hope, and death. Together we lingered in this semi-dark room pondering the news that he had received. Most of you have lived long enough that you have walked paths of despair at one time or another. We might not want to talk about those things too often. Maybe out of the fear of the emotions that might come up if we dwelt too long in those places, that a tear might actually come to our eyes and the one that we are with might think, Well, isn't that one weak? Maybe we don't want to talk about those experiences very often because we're just not certain how they fit into a life of faith. After all, we've grown up singing, Jesus loves me and how great thou art. And sometimes, in the face of life's difficulties, we might wrestle with the idea, Jesus, if you really love me, and Jesus, if you are so great, why is it that I'm living in this pain? The texts that are before us this day are ripe with pain if we listen to them. Before there is healing in the Gospel of Mark, there is deep, deep despair in both of these stories. A leader of the synagogue comes to Jesus. Now this is a man of deep, deep faith or he wouldn't be a leader of the synagogue. His little daughter, 12-year-old daughter, is at the point of death. What do you think was his state of mind as he came to Jesus? What do you think that his voice sounded like as he asked Jesus to follow and come and heal? Did it quiver? Did it quake? Did he have a stance about him like he wanted to just grab hold of Jesus and take off running back to his house with Jesus? Well, before they can get very far down the road, Jesus is encountered by this woman. Twelve years in a flow of blood, and as the framing narrative before the reading that I shared with you this morning, that piece that's in your bulletin, she's ritually unclean for 12 long years, unable to be in, out in the community in public. She has spent absolutely everything that she has. Her money is gone. She has been to doctor after doctor after doctor and no relief. Can you imagine how many times she has been to a physician, had great joy about what she has been told because this one has promised that she's going to be healed only to have it all fall apart again. Can you imagine that she is at her wit's end? hoping beyond hope for some sort of miracle with Jesus. We miss the pain, the despair and the hopelessness in these two stories if we fly forward to the healing too quickly. And if you look back at the Old Testament reading with me, There's a whole lot of pain in the book of Lamentations as well. The truth is, we only read from the book of Lamentations in this rotation of readings that we have that cover three years once. Once every three years, we read from the book of Lamentations. And what Margaret read this morning are the most hopeful verses in this book. If you open up Lamentations, it's five short chapters. This is at the very center of it. You will read despair 
and every question that any human being has ever had on their mind while they wrestle with God about what's going on in life. So here's the backstory. The Babylonians came into Jerusalem. They crushed houses. They killed people. They stormed the temple and destroyed it. And you've got to remember that the temple is different than a church. The temple in that time was considered to be the place, the one and only place on earth that God resided. And the Babylonians came in and they destroyed it. With rubble all about, with people lying dead in the street, you can imagine all sorts of questions coming up in the mind of the one who wrote Lamentation. God, are you punishing us? Have we lost favor with you, Lord? God, where are you? Are you listening? Do you care? Will you ever speak or act on our behalf again? But even in the midst of the lamentation, there is that verse, verse 22, that was read this morning. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I wonder if those words were written after the writer of Lamentations kept saying them again and again and again, trying to believe and create hope beyond hope that God is still God and God is present. Most certainly wouldn't be the first time that people have confessed their despair and then looked for hope. Remember in the ninth chapter of the Gospel of Mark, the father of the young man who continues, he says, to be dashed about by demons, even thrown into fire from time to time, comes to Jesus and asks for healing. And Jesus says, if you believe, anything can happen. And the man says, I believe. Help me in my unbelief. When we spend time in scripture really pondering, really looking at what is there behind the words, we find plenty of time where scripture writers have walked through deep despair. Think about Psalm 23 and the great words that we often find comfort in. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me, right? You know those words. Only someone who has walked through the valley of the shadow of death could write those words. We don't know what the backstory is. We don't know what happened in their life. But it is a confession of faith once the person has made their way through. And if you jump back one psalm before Psalm 23, you land, mathematicians, at Psalm 22. And it is from that psalm that Jesus on the cross cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? On Jesus' lips, the Savior of the world, words of despair and agony, a cry out to God in the midst of what is going on in his life. What might you lament this day? The pain of death? The despair of something that's happening with one of your kids? Maybe something that's happening with your own health or the health of someone that you love dearly? For some, it might be the fear of this drought and the consequences of it. Hear this. To lament is not an act of faithlessness. I think it is an act of deep, deep faith. We can only 
cry out in lament if we believe there's someone there listening that God hears us. Henry Nouwen, a Catholic priest and a profound writer, penned this about suffering in his book, Turning My Morning Into Dancing, Finding Hope in Hard Times. Here's what Nouwen writes. I am less likely to deny my suffering when I learn how God uses it to mold me and draw me closer to him. I will be less likely to see my pains as interruptions to my plans and more able to see them as a means for God to make me ready to receive God. I let Christ live near my hurts and distractions. I let Christ live near my hurts and distractions. So we come to this day. We come to this worship service. We come and we pray We come to a meal of bread and wine, body and blood. We seek after Jesus in the midst of all of the questions that we have, in the midst of all of our fears, all of our trusting and our believing, moments of deep faith and wavering faith, we come. Honestly speaking to our Lord of our hurts and our hopes, of our losses and our learnings of our joy and our sorrows, we are able to come to the risen one. The man I met in the hospital room, I visited again the next day. When I arrived at the room, the door was open, the lights were on, the curtains were wide open. He was sitting on the edge of his bed, feet on the floor, and he was holding in his hand a miniature steam engine. We started to talk. He said his family brought it from home for him the night before. As we talked, I learned that one of his hobbies was to build working replica steam engines from scratch. He would turn each piece, put it together, make it run. He said, I'm getting out today. I've got this one to finish up. I want to leave it for my family. He had found hope in that long night of darkness. Brothers and sisters in Christ, to lament is an act of faith, and in the midst of that act of faith, eventually, we are able to find a bit of hope, a bit of hope in Christ himself. Thanks be to God. Amen. I invite you to rise as you are able as we sing our hymn of the day, Great is Thy Faithfulness, hymn 773 in the ELW.
let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. As we near the end of June, we pray for the ongoing needs of the world. O oh God, for your church around the world, we pray. For congregations in transition, for troubled denominations, for Christians facing persecution, and for our own community of faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. For your earth, we pray. For lands suffering under excessive heat, for waters rising along coastlines, for animals deprived of habitats, and for our own prairie soil. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the nations, we pray, that governments learn the ways of peace and cooperation, that the poor receive food and shelter and respect, that gun violence and all prejudices come to an end. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the hungry, we pray. For starving children. For relief agencies. For the end to famine. And for an increase in generosity among us all. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear, our, hear our prayer. prayer. For the sick and afflicted, we pray. For children who are at the point of death, for women who endure hemorrhaging, for persons who receive no relief from physicians, for everyone who will contract COVID, and for those we name here before you, Adam, Bob, Bonnie, Brenda, Connie, Donna, Eric, Fran, Gary, John, Karen, Kim, Lanny, Mike, Myrna, Susan, and Mike. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We give you thanks for all the faithful who have lived and died in faith, especially Sarah Marcus, who has been lifted to you from our community of faith. Comfort all who continue to walk in mourning and loss. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Into your hands, today and forever, we commit for all whom we pray, trusting in the grace made known to us in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, we will receive our offering. Again, our thanks for the generosity of this community of faith that enables the hands and feet of Christ the heart of Christ, the mind of Christ, to continue to do work. If you're comfortable standing, please rise for our canticle. Salvation belongs to our God and to Christ the Lamb forever and ever. Great and wonderful are your deeds, O God, in the universe. Chosen to our 
God of justice and love. We give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need. Awaken us to the needs of others. And at the end, bring all the world to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. For our announcements today, we want to begin with just a big thank you. You'll notice in your bulletin today we went with colored pictures because we wanted to celebrate the great community block party of this past Wednesday, the 23rd. And look at all the names on page 7 in your bulletin this morning. We cannot thank the members of Trinity enough for rising up and helping us to meet our neighbors in a grand way. We got to know each other a little better, and that is a gift. And please read Pastor Mark's comments on the bottom of page 7. So again, thank you for all of that. Um, Give yourself a hand. It was really great. Now, I know you can't wait for coffee, so we're going to do this quick. But there is a kiosk on the southwest corner in the narthex. We will now be posting weekly updates on our renovation project. So if you want to read about them, hopefully next week we'll be able to get our printer to print it in color. But check out the progress on that this morning. Also, we continue to always be looking for help in serving, for communion, for reading, for making our services run smoothly, all of those kinds of hands that help bring that about. Heather is available back at the Welcome Center this morning, and you may stop by and see her if you're able to lend us a hand. Please take a moment to look at some of the other opportunities um, before us that are lifted up in your bulletin this morning. If you're comfortable standing, please rise for the blessing. Go into the world to serve God with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. May God bless you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit forevermore. Amen. Our sending song this morning is Blessed Assurance, ELW 638. 638.